All right, so it's pretty much like Law and Order meets To Catch a Predator meets Catfish. I'm in. Alright, welcome to Taste Take. If you're new here, I do spoiler-free movie and TV reviews. Give you a little background, basically enough I think it's worth checking out or not. If that's something you're into, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for your boy. For my regular Taste Takers, let's see if this documentary ends up in my top 8. Get it? I said top 8, and it's about MySpace? Ugh, never mind. Alright, quick background here. Why Did You Kill Me is a new Netflix documentary film about the case of Crystal Theobald. It's not a documentary series, just one film about an hour and 20 minutes. It tells a story about how a mom used fake profiles on social media to get critical intel into the murder of her daughter. I'll break down the story for y'all, then I'll tell you what I thought about the documentary. All right, plot time. Why Did You Kill Me goes back to February 2006 in Riverside, California. That's a city not far from Los Angeles. One night, Crystal Theobald was shot while she was in the car with her mom and her brother, literally on her block. The story starts not long before that where Crystal's brother's in his car talking to his boy. All of a sudden, this white Ford expedition comes creeping along and starts grilling him. Then his boy goes inside because he doesn't want no smoke. And this is a part of California where you don't want the smoke. So now the brother who's driving wants to get out of there. He speeds by these dudes and they start chasing him. And then he loses them. The chasers circle around the block and end up face to face with another car that Crystal's in. Now, not knowing who's in that car, one of the dudes in the white Ford expedition gets out and start shooting. Mind you, he has no idea that this car is connected to the other car that he was chasing. He just got out and started shooting. He gets back in his car and they just drive off into the sunset like nothing happened. All right, let me rewind here. Crystal's brother named Robbie is in car one. He's just minding his business, chilling with his boy. Car two is the white Ford Expedition. Pulls up, starts looking all suspicious. So now Robbie's boy runs inside the house. He's the one that didn't want the smoke. So Robbie, he's trying to get out of there. So car one speeds off and car two starts chasing him. Car one loses car two. And by the time car two circles around the block again, it runs into car three. Now car three includes Crystal, Crystal's mom, and Crystal's other brother. Mind you, car two, White Ford Expedition, has no idea that car three has anything to do with car one. But regardless, car two, a dude in the front gets out and starts shooting at car three, just because. My daughter, Crystal, and my son, Justin, get right up here. I look over, I see the gun. Bang, bang, bang. They said, Crystal's been shot. Only Crystal gets hit, and they drive to the closest gas station so they could call for help. Unfortunately, Crystal dies from this bullet wound, hits her literally right in the back of the head, and now the cops are working with Belinda, Crystal's mom on trying to find these bad guys. It was a lot of gang activity in that area and one of the most prominent gangs was the 5150 so the cop figures it had to be them. Now if any of them are watching, I didn't say that, the cop said that. Anyway, the lead detective on this case shows Belinda, that's Crystal's mom, a whole bunch of pictures of young 5150 gang members. That's because Crystal's mom said she got a good look at the shooter while it was all happening in the car. So this is like a critical ID. She points to one of them and she says, that's him. That's the guy. The cops drag this kid in for questioning. This dude is like 16. He tells the cops like, look, bro, I was at my friend's house. I was nowhere near where that shooting was at. Now, the one cop was doing his cop shit like, we know you're at the scene, so just tell us the truth. Meanwhile, the other cops looking up the story, turns out the kid was at his friend's house, so the guy let this guy go. And then they go back to the mom like, all right, no more photos for you. Then messed it all up. But now the cops have no leads and no idea who drives this white Ford Expedition. And that's when the family decided to take matters into their own hands. So Crystal had this younger cousin named Jamie, and Jamie was really big into MySpace. And if you don't know what MySpace is, you're too damn young to be watching true crime. Anyway, Jamie finds out that a lot of these 5150 gang members were also big into MySpace. Relax. Thugs need social media too. She has the genius idea to make a fake profile and friend all these gangbanger homies and hopefully get some clues into her cousin's murder. Mind you, this kid is 14 years old. She grabs some random hotties photo off Google and goes to work. She says that she wanted to make the profile in a way that the gangsters would like. So she said that the girl liked to party, liked to drink, liked to smoke, 
She named her Rachel, and these dudes start hitting her up like crazy. Now Belinda, that's Crystal's mom, finds out about this fake page and she thinks it's genius. And she wants her to make another one. But this time, she wants her to use Crystal's actual picture and name her Angel. It's heavy. My space. I was obsessed with it. I knew how to make it look like this girl on my space is real. It looked like I belonged. My typing was acting. Pretending to be her, I think that's what made it difficult at the end. Catfish Angel is way less of a party animal than Catfish Rachel was, but she was still getting a lot of hits. One 5150 dude named Jokes was hitting her up the most. So they were talking back and forth, but it's still just 14 year old Jamie pretending to be her dead cousin, which I'm sure had a lot of long-term psychological effects. Is anyone checking on this kid? Anyway, naturally, Jokes wants to meet up. Keep in mind, Catfish, the MTV show, wouldn't debut for another six years. So every time Catfish Angel made up some stupid excuse about why she couldn't meet up, it didn't really raise a lot of red flags. One day, Jokes invites Catfish Angel to this party he's throwing, and Jamie tells him like, ah, I don't got a ride. And Jokes is like, nah, like I'll come pick you up. Now, no matter what, Jamie's gonna cancel on this dude, but not before she finds out about that ride. She tells him, mm, maybe, like what kind of car should I look for? And he tells her, my white Ford Expedition. What? Jamie's 14 years old, ladies and gentlemen, solving crimes, murder mysteries. Give her flowers now. She understands the assignment. Anyway, the family finally tells the cops they've been catfishing these dudes and they got a lead, which is much more than the cops had at that time. So the cops like, look, y'all, y'all can't be doing this on your own. But like, what's the screening? The cops find jokes, bring them in for questioning. And now we got a documentary. So what's my take? You know, now that y'all got me in my true crime bag, I just rate these shows on how crazy they are. Like, American Murder, The Family Next Door was crazy. The Night Stalker was super freaking crazy. This story was marginally crazy. In American Murder, The Family Next Door, you're breaking down how a dude can just snap and kill his whole family. Like, he melted his kid's skin off. And the Night Stalker, he's cutting out eyeballs. Here in Why Did You Kill Me, it really just boils down to gang members doing gang member things. Still an interesting documentary, and it's good to hear from the cousin who did the catfishing. It's good to hear from the cops who were working the case. It's even good to hear some of the ex-5150 gang members that they got to talk. I guess the real crazy part about this documentary is hearing from Crystal's mom, Belinda. She's like the main character, but she just gives off some really weird vibes. It doesn't do her daughter any favors. You actually find out that she did jail time for selling meth, which now that I think of it, makes sense that she would name her only daughter Crystal. Anyway, after Jamie found out about that white expedition from jokes on MySpace, she didn't want to catfish anymore. Shit was getting her, which makes sense. This kid is 14. So Belinda took over the logins. And can you imagine a mom trying to catfish just in there using all sorts of old ass lingo? She really went in there and went crazy because she would try to get 5150 guys addresses. Then she would call ICE to try to get them deported. Is that racist? She would start fake beefs pretending to be rival gangs. And the craziest part was her 666 party. Long story long, she really used the MySpace page to throw a fake party on June 6, 06, 666. These 5150 gang members thought they were gonna turn up with free drinks and strippers, but in reality, it was just gonna be Belinda sitting in her car with a gun, shooting them one by one in the desert. I mean, falsely identifying that kid in the beginning was one thing. Calling ICE, that's cold. Hmm. But planning an execution party to kill these dudes? I don't know. I told them, okay, everybody, no violence. But in the back of my own mind, I still knew I was gonna kill them. Besides this complicated family dynamic the documentary explores, I can actually appreciate how even though this is gang violence that ended this young girl's life for no reason, the documentary actually did a good job of humanizing these gang members. They could have easily turned this into a political piece and talk about how gangs are the scum of the earth and how they need to be handled accordingly, but they actually took some time to introduce to some of their family, explain how and why people join these gangs, just kind of showing like, a lot of the times, these are just impressionable kids with nowhere else to turn. At the end of the day, when the state of California got their guy in this case, they want him to face the death penalty. Personally, I don't care who it is, I don't think anyone deserves the death penalty, but especially in a case like this, if anyone could benefit from the rehabilitation and counseling during a prison sentence, it's these gang members. In all fairness, it actually was Crystal's mom who asked him to take the death penalty off the table, so regardless of what you think of her, I still respect that. So again, shout out to Netflix for not taking the easy way out and painting these guys as monsters. Of course, the crime is terrible, but they weren't looking to kill Crystal Theobald that night. It's just a sad reality of the dangerous environment that these people live in day in and day out. 
I'm gonna give Why Did You Kill Me three stars. If you're into true crime, it's not as crazy as Night Stalker or the upcoming Sons of Sam, but I still think it's a pretty interesting story. As creepy as the mom comes off sometimes, I still gotta respect her perseverance with bringing these criminals to justice, no matter how many years it took. It's a nice testament to what lengths a parent will go to to protect their children, even long after they've passed on. Why Did You Kill Me comes to Netflix on April 14th. As always, thanks for checking out Taste Take. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like and that subscribe button in the comments. Are you planning on checking out this documentary? Did you have MySpace? Who was in your top eight? I never had MySpace. I was a Facebook dude. I'm a purist. Thanks for the time, y'all. Peace.